A lot of people have been saying to me, Michael, talk about JK Rowling. Do it now. Let's talk about the whole situation. And when I say the whole situation, I mean a few random aspects of the situation with no overriding theme. So Body Shop tweeted at JK Rowling like, hey, you dumb bitch. <laughs> Ever heard of trans rights? I bet you haven't, you moron. Well, here you go. Here's a book on trans rights. And at first I was like, hmm, that's a bit heavy there, Body Shop. But then I thought, wait a minute, transgender rights, the book, is just a descriptive work dealing with various areas of inequality that certain transgender activists have identified. Whereas J.K. Rowling's objection is with the entire idea that gender should be defined in the way that queer theorists argue, and as such, her position would be either that being transgender in the ultimate sense is a meaningless term, or that it has some very specific definition different to how queer theorists would define it. So how exactly does sending somebody a book about the various inequalities transgender activists have identified serve to change that person's mind about the definition of gender proposed by queer theorists? The answer is pretty obviously that it doesn't. There are books that do try to defend the queer theorist definition of gender. I wouldn't say that any of them do a very good job, and most of them simply retreat back to the old but intersex people exist retort. It's pretty funny that queer theorists falsely accuse gender critical feminists of being biological essentialists, and then can only retreat to obscure biological phenomenon to defend their ideas. The point being that this is like if you had a communist friend, and rather than sending him Hayek's The Road to Serfdom, which actually argues against communism, you instead sent him a speculative list of neoliberal policies you'd like to see implemented. That's basically what's happening here. Rather than sending JK a book that would actually argue against her position, you're simply sending her a list of case studies where transgender activists would say, that is bad. This just got me thinking more abstractly about the whole trans rights meme, because we've all heard it. Donkey Kong says trans rights, trans rights are human rights, and now in this case we have some company offering to send somebody a book, and what is the book called? Trans rights. And it seems like we've reached a point where trans rights doesn't mean anything, although you can discover its true meaning if you drop the S off the end and replace the trans with I'm. Because that's all it is. You could send somebody a book that actually addresses their criticisms of queer theory, but why would you, when you could send them a book that literally says I'm right in big bold letters? You could make some videos actually offering up a substantive argument for queer theory's conception of gender, but why would you when you can simply have your man-child video game character say that you're right? This is why if you ever want to really just piss off a transgender activist, this is what you've got to do, okay? Take them seriously and keep arguing in good faith, which is assume that the person you're talking to has an argument and has something meaningful to say. Every time you bring up an objection, act as if you think that you're just one concise explanation away from completely abandoning that explanation. Even if you've had this conversation with trans activists a million times and you know you aren't going to get this explanation. Just act like you really think you're about to be convinced that the gender critical view is false, because this is really funny. Because obviously, the person you're talking to does not have an argument. These are the same people who, when given an opportunity to plug a book, don't plug a book that makes an actual argument, they just plug a book that says I'm right in big bold letters. And if you just remain completely earnest throughout your entire discussion, the people you're talking to will go mental. At first, you'll probably get yikester a lot, because progressives that go full woke are literally NPCs incapable of saying much beyond yikes and y'all. If you ever haven't had a conversation with a trans activist in a while, then just look in the mirror and say, yikes. Y'all bigots need trans rights. That fix, <laughs> that fix of literally the exact same thing they all say should keep you covered for a few hours. Anyway, at this point, you might want to just give up, but keep persevering. Maybe mention a book on queer theory you've read recently and you feel you just couldn't understand the argument they were making. Perhaps say something like, I struggled to understand how the existence of intersex people automatically translates to gender just entirely being based on personal identity. Keep asking them every question you've ever wanted to ask, and no matter how hard they yikes at you, just keep asking. And you might be thinking, surely if I keep asking earnest questions, making it absolutely clear that all I want to do is inform myself because I don't agree with the ideas that transgender people present in their literature, surely if I do that, eventually they'll realize I'm worth talking to and respond. Believe me, this will never happen. The closest I've got is at one point one of them stopped yikesing long enough to clarify an earlier statement they'd made that I had legitimately misunderstood. You will never get close to examining actual queer theory. Why? Because the entire argument is based on the idea that there isn't an argument. It's based on the idea that if you disagree with any aspect of queer theory, you simply hate trans rights and need to be given a book on trans rights so you can finally buck up your ideas and get on the trans right side of history. 
For them to explain queer theory with the hopes of convincing somebody to agree with them, they would have to assume that there is a chance that some people actually disagree with them, not because of hatred or anything else, but because queer theory has not been adequately explained. And then the whole thing falls down, because how many of these people who mindlessly tweet trans rights actually understand and can offer a comprehensive defense of queer theory's conception of gender? This is a religious mindset, because in the largest religions, you can receive the positive effects of belief without understanding the rationale for belief. Somebody with a doctorate in theology who is a Catholic is not going to be saved, but somebody who's barely even passed high school but was indoctrinated as an evangelical Baptist is home clear, saved by faith, because that's how religions work. Religions don't get worked up about why you believe in them. Although I suppose trans rights is more faith-based than most religions. Even in the most sola fide religion, evangelical Christianity, there is a robust system of apologetics. Evangelicals will constantly go out and debate and lecture, making presuppositional, philosophical, and historical arguments for the truth of Christianity, while also engaging in all those styles of argument and more against other religions. In trans rights activism, there are people who have attempted to argue for the queer theory understanding of gender, but they aren't put on the front lines. They aren't the people whose books get plugged in viral tweets. And why? Because not only is this a religion which doesn't want you to think about what you're saying or what you believe, but it doesn't even allow for the possibility that other people disagree because they have thought about what's being said and what's being believed. And that's why I repeat again that if you want to totally piss off a trans rights activist, simply take them 100% seriously. Act as if they are the smartest person you know, and all you want them to do is educate you. And that will annoy them, because they have been programmed to believe that you cannot possibly have earnest intentions, genuine misapprehensions, or legitimate criticisms of trans theory. You can only ever be a hateful bigot. And given how trans activists have treated JK Rowling, I'd say it's a good time to piss off some trans activists. Anyway, that's my random thoughts on the issue. I'm sure I will repeat some of these general points in other videos in the future. I'm very optimistic about the future of my channel going forward, so I hope y'all won't all yikes out of here and still stick around instead. Please do like and share, and I guess just treat it, treat, treat? I guess it is a treat. Just tweet at JK Rowling. I mean, why not? It doesn't cost you anything, you know? Um, so yeah, bye.